So the first exercise will be to show you how to create the very easy validation rules. We are going into here. You can see here, then you type maintenance. After typing maintenance, where you are in the maintenance app, all of you are seeing this validation button. I hope all of you are seeing this validation button. Then yes. we click on validation. And uh, once on the validation, here, the first button, that is where we can click on validation rule. So there is, you can start uh, scrolling and see what is there, or you can go directly and create a new rule. In this exercise, we have to create a rule We have to create a very sim simple rule of HIV. Let's say we, we, we take DPT, hepatitis, those given should be less or equal to DPT, those used. But I think this will be a little bit complicated. It will require some calculation. Let us take a very simple one, which will be Please, your screen is not showing. Uh, okay, let, let me let me share my screen. So it, we want to take like the example we used yesterday. I hope we are there. I was seeing my screen. So we are here. We want to create HIV. We remember the, the, the exercise we were reviewing now. So we want to create the same, but for everyone has to do the same. Then maybe we can move on and try to do more exercise. So you hit on the plus button. After clicking on the plus button, as I said, you can go directly where you are here on the validation. You can click this plus button. It is the same button as if you can click here and you go directly there, or you can decide to review what is already there and click on the plus button here. So after clicking on the plus button here, you go here, you put the name of the validation rule. You remember yesterday, yes, yesterday's session was like, we have to put a name which is meaningful. And because all of us are working in the same instance, we are gonna use our initial to differentiate the validation rule we create between like me, my, the validation rule I create to be differentiated with the validation rule Bashir created. So. I have to put my initial, like for me, like this. Then I put under scroll, and we are gonna create a validation rule for HIV. I'll type HIV test positive male plus HIV test positive female should be lesser or equal to HIV test performed male plus HIV test 
performed female. So this, it is, you remember yesterday we talked about the meaningful of the validation rule. I can take the same and put it here on the short name, but let me try to reduce it because it is too long. Then if you have too many role, it is also a good, a good practice to put a code so that maybe you can document them and you say like in HIV, I have this and this, but that is not mandatory. Another one, it is the description. Here in the description, you just write what the validation rule will be doing. Like this validation rule, it is about comparing the HIV test positive for male plus the HIV test positive for female, you compare them against all the tests performed for male and all the tests performed for female. Then here in the instruction, you put the instruction. So it is like, whenever there is an error, you call the data manager as we were suggesting, data, data manager of the facility, and ask him or her to correct the data. So here again, you can put the importance depending of how is the, how the program is configured. So you can put it, there is three type of importance. You, there, there is three types of importance. You can make it high priority, medium priority, or low priority. You are the one who knows how your program works and how critical this rule can be on your reporting. Either you can put it high if you find it very critical, medium, or low. Let us get remain with the medium, the proposed medium. And here also you have a reporting type. The reporting type, it is recommended that it is matching with the reporting period of reporting form. So if you are doing this rule against the reporting form, which is a monthly reporting form, it is better to have this rule run on a monthly basis. If it is a quarterly, it is better on a quarterly. If it is a weekly, it is better. So it is recommended to keep the same reporting. Then we have here, as you, if you remember, the three side or the three part of the validation rules. We have the left side, we have the operator and the right side. So we click on the left side. Once we are on the left side, you, you have here on the top, you have first, you can, precise if you can skip, if any value, the data elements you're gonna choose here, if any of the data elements you are going to choose here, any value is missing, you can say that uh, you can choose to skip whenever a value is missing or to skip even if all those values are missing. Or you can be very critical and say never skip. If there is a value missing, the you can have a top up, a, a, an alert which will pop up and show you that there is a missing value. Then we are going here on the title. There we can have HIV. You remember what we put on the left side? It is HIV test performed. A test positive, HIV test positive, male plus HIV test positive, female. This is what will be on the left side. Then we are going, this is the, the title. After putting, writing down the title, we choose the data element, which will be the component of this left side. 
So here we have that element whereby we can choose that element. We have programs. You remember yesterday we said this validation rule can be run against a data entry form and aggregate data entry form, a event capture data entry form, and a tracker capture form. So if you want to use a program, event program or tracker capture, you can go to program. You can also run them again, organiz organization units or constant or reporting grade. But most of the time, people use the validation rules against these two, like to check the error on the entered data. The two, it is, this is for aggregate and this is for event and tracker capture program. It is also advisable on the data element to choose the disaggregated, the disaggregated data element. What does that mean? That means that here we have HIV test positive, which has been disaggregated into male and female. So it is advisable when we are picking the data element, you pick the disaggregated one, the male and the female, not the total one, because sometimes you might find that the total are not, uh, like when doing some calculation, you may find some differences. So it is advisable, advisable to take the disaggregated data element. So for here, I will write down HIV test. I have here HIV test positive male. I don't know if all of you are seeing my screen. I hope so. Yes, we can see. Then plus HIV test for female. And I can see here the description. You know, here it is kind of code. And if you want to see what does this mean in our normal language, this is here where you can see HIV test positive for male. HIV test positive for female. And after doing this, you save. Here we are saving the left side. Now we are gonna choose the operator, which will be in the middle. We have all, we have like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, uh, like default value whereby you can choose the operator. You can have equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, compulsory pair and exclusive pair. So you can choose, depending of the condition you want to put there, you can choose what condition you take. So for us, it will be less, less, less than or equal to. We take less than. Then we go for the right side. We can choose right side. And we use the same, never skip. We put the title, the description of what will be the data element be down here. On this right side, we will have HIV test perform male plus HIV test perform performed female. The same way we click down here and we go here on that element to choose the data element to put here. The same where we choose for the left side, we choose disaggregated data element. So we'll say test performed. This will help us to filter because we have a lot of, because we have a lot of 
data element, if you are typing here in this search, search area, it will help us to filter the data element instead of searching our data element among a thousand data elements, we will filter and search the data element very quickly. So we have here the mail, we double click, then plus we choose also HIV test performed for female and we can check if everyone is, everything is well and we have HIV test performed male plus HIV test performed female. Then we go for save. We save for this right side. Then we can go here, the other part is organization unit level. We can, it is also advisable here also to choose the facility. So we run this validation rules against, against a facility. Because you remember, this is a validation rules. Most of the time we are comparing logical rule within a, a form. So the data which has been entered within a reporting form and the reporting form are linked to the facility. That's why we are, looking, we are choosing a facility and send it on there. Uh, the other, from left side to right side, then we can, we can, if you don't skip this rule during from, from no, validation. Hamza, before you save, no. sorry, uh, before you save this, uh, colleague, it's a participant who wants you to start again from the left side. Just from the left one. side. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, let me maybe delete this and start again. This is a quick one. So we just go in there a little bit quicker and we start from, from scratch. So you remember from the analyst, from the dashboard, most of you have reached on the dashboard. Then you go here on this, but this, the place where there is all the module or all the apps, you choose maintenance app. After maintenance app, you go directly to the validation button. After clicking on the validation button, there is this plus button. You click on plus button and you have the place where you start creating your validation rules. As I explained to you, put the validation rule there, but before to differentiate in this exercise, not in the normal life. In the normal life, you'll put directly the validation rules. But in this exercise, because we want us to differentiate our validation rules, we will start by putting our initial, like for me, my initial is A and N, A and N, then the name of the validation rules. The name of the validation rules for us, it is HIV, test positive plus for male plus HIV test positive for female, which has to be less or equal to, less than or equal to HIV test performed for male plus HIV test performed for female. This is, will be the title of the validation rules. Remember we said the title have to be meaningful so that people who will see the validation rules, maybe notification, will understand and will notice where the problem, where the alert is and where they have to go and uh, fix. So we put also a short name. I said, if you have too many validation rules, you can make a code and make a list. So following them one by one, but it is not mandatory. You can, it is also good and advisable to, be, to put a description of the validation rules. What is the purpose of this validation rule? What the validation rule will help to do. So I just put the title here, the name of the validation rule. But if you want to put more details, you can put more details. Here also on the instruction, you have to put the action. If this validation rule is violated, what will be the action? 
So we can put an instruction, we like call the data manager of the facility and ask him or her to fix data related issue. So then we are going here on the importance. Depending of the critical of your reporting form of your data, you may decide if this is very critical and you put it high, medium, and low. So depending of how you are the owner or you are the ME, you are the one who knows how this can be critical or how this can be uh, medium. So you put the priority for uh, based on the reality in your project or underground there. We just keep medium. And here we have also the reporting period. We have on the reporting period, we have monthly. We have the same reporting period as the same we are using on the reporting form. It is recommended to keep the same reporting period as the reporting form you are, get, you are running this validation rule. So if this validation rule is running again within a reporting form of a month, you put, you choose the report, reporting period a monthly. If it is a quarterly, you put here, you choose a quarter, a, a quarter or you can choose a biweekly, depending of the same period your reporting form has. Then here we are on the place where you have to put the condition or you have to select the variable which will be which will be part of our validation rules. So we have the left side, we have the operator and we have the right side. On the left side, when you are clicking on the left side, I explained to you here that we can, we have these three options where we can skip, even if one of the variable is missing, we skip, we skip it. Or if all the variables are missing, we skip them. Or here never skips, meaning like whenever there is a problem, you specify, you, the validation rule has to tell you. And on the description, we put the name of what will be the variable on the left side. So, Diaby uh, Ibrahima. I, 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 I can, can, can I please suggest something? Maybe we just put this and we'll have a question and answer session. Maybe that's, we can discuss more. Because if we start interrupting, unless if you don't get the voice, that's when you can ask if you don't hear the voice or you don't see the, the screen. But please, we will be having a session of question and answer. That will be an open session and we'll give the floor to everyone. So Ibrahima, is it something related to the sound or related to? If not, can you keep it, please? Can you keep it, please, for a few minutes later on the question and the answer session? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we'll put here HIV test performed, test positive, male plus HIV test positive female. Then I explained that this is the component against which are make which can be part of the left side. We have data element, we have programs, we have org, org unit count, we have constant, we have reporting rates. So the most used component, it, they are data element and program. Data element, it is where we take the value or the variable we want to, to be part of our validation rules. And program also is where we choose the program. And in the data element, it is advisable to use the disaggregated data element, not use the aggregated one. Like for here, our example, it is advisable to keep the male data element and the female data element instead of putting HIV positive, test positive. So for us, I put HIV. Then this is an area whereby you can filter because we have many data elements. That's why we are typing the 
first letters of the data element to filter and the, the, the system will display only data element starting whose name, that's name starting only with HIV. And it will be easier for us to get the data element. So we, have, we want test. So this is the aggregated one, but it is advisable to use the disaggregated one. So I want to take this male plus this female. And I can check if the rule is well written. If there is an error, most of the time down here, you can see an error. But for us, the rule is well written and we just save. Then we go to the type of operator which the system have preloaded. So you can choose within this eight type of operator, the one, the one meets your conditions. So like we have equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, compulsory pair and exclusive pair. For us, the condition is less than or equal to. Then we go to, we go to the right side whereby also we have the same logic. We put here the name, the name of the variable which will be part of this right side. Then we go here the same way as we did for the left side. We choose the test performed for male, double click, plus the test performed for female, double click. We can check if it is well written. We can see down here if the name corresponds to what we want, and then we save. Again, we are going a little bit down here. This validation rule, we want it to be, to run against facility. It is advisable to put facility because you remember the validation rules, they are being run to check the consistency within a reporting form. And the reporting form are linked to the facility. That's why it is advisable most of the time to choose for facility. Then here we can put skip validation rules. If we don't validation rule to be, uh, when we are clicking on complete, if you don't want it to be like displayed, if it can keep it and allow people to continue the data entry, or if you want it to show up when people are doing the data entry. So we can, it is better also because we did the validation rule to show the person that we need we need this validation rule to show him that there is an error and to correct the error before like the error being saved and uh, maybe compromise the quality of the data. We want the person to save it on time. Then it is not advisable to click here. So you just save the validation rules and we can check this validation rules if it is respected yes or not so you remember the method of checking the validation rules we have uh, then after creating the validation rule it is also advisable if you have too many programs you are running so like you have running you are running or you are following data for hiv program for immunization program for maybe tb to create these validation rules and put them into groups so that you can have a group for HIV, you can have a group for TB, you can have a group for immunization, and it will help you to easy search them and reach to them when you want to, to revise them or when to, you want to run the data validation analysis. So the validation rule we created, I have to go here on the second part and create a group. The same way I'll put my initial and put the validation rules.
I can put a description if I want, but it is not mandatory. And here I choose the validation rule, which will be the member of the group I have just created. Then I save the group. Then the, the following will be to go to the data entry and to check if the validation rule is running correctly or to check it via the data quality app. Let me use the data entry. And uh, for it was the HIV, I want to choose a period. Then when I click on run validations, should be showing me the validation rules, which are, you can see the instruction here, down here, and the rule which has been, the rule which has been violated. So I think for this first exercise, every one of you can do it before we go for a second exercise. Manya, if you are back, you can take over. No, I think, thank you Hamza for that. I don't know what happened to my microphone. It just uh, stopped working, but uh, I'm grateful. You've done it very well in a very slow manner that I think everybody is in a position to practice. I think now for now is just to allow them to go to the exercises and uh, we, they go slowly by slowly, exercise by exercise. Let me... Hello, so we... We, we, we have now the validation rules in the module. So we need to go and it, it, we are in, in day three. We are going to use the learner's guide. So this is, this is what we've been going through all along. And uh, actually we've done live demo and now we want us to do the activity. So we need to finish this at least, I don't know whether they need a small break or they can still manage to at least try to work on before they take a break. <clears throat> so, so that is, that's where we are starting from. Activity one, create a validation rule for HIV. It is a, is the instruction clear? We just go one by one. You go just the way it's written. And, and then you, when you are making the name, put the initial to you, the first with your initial, if it's A-N or A something, and just create. It's very straightforward, actually. Uh, and the way Hamza has taken it, I think he has even given you the free marks. So I think if there is no any other question from the participants, I would like us to go to this and start creating it, create the validation rule HIV test positive exactly the way it has been done. I'll, I, I think I will leave it at this until we give it a few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, then we will have a small break and then we can continue with the, the exercise. This is the main exercise for today. It's more, mostly on yourself learning how to do it. Let me, See if there are any questions. <clears throat> 